Mike Blocker. I'm the Director of Sales for North River Boats. I'm Jay Kahn. I'm the General Manager in Charge of Manufacturing at North River Boats. So today we are part of our ongoing series of uh, Ask the Experts in North River Boats. Uh, one of the things we're going to talk about today is um, basic mooring principles, uh, if you will. Um, so this time of year, uh, we're seeing more and more people moor their boats for you know extended period of time, month or two months at a time. Um, and we've also, over the last year or two, we've seen more people that are first-time boat buyers. Um, so you know, regardless of whether your experience is very little or whether you have been boating all your life, you know, just a couple of, of, of minor tips um, and things to you know help keep your your boat moored safely. Um, so that when you come to the dock after an extended period of time, it's still there. So, yeah, the last thing you want to come, you know, for the weekend, and you've you've left your boat moored in, in some marina somewhere, and you show up uh, Saturday morning to go boating, and it's hanging from its cleats is is not what anybody wants to have happen. You know, so there's things that that you as a boat owner should understand. Uh, and, and think about when we tie up a boat at the marina and we walk away and go home for the week and then expect to come back the next weekend and find our boat where we left it. You know, one of those things is some older boats uh, may have the old compression style drain plug. Some boats that were built, you know, you know five, six, seven years and older. And uh, those are really not designed for uh, being left in a mooring situation over more than a day. Um, so if you've got one of those boats that has the old twist rubber compression style drain plug, really don't want to moor that thing uh, at all overnight. Um, you can have those changed. Um, you can go out and have somebody, a dealer or whatever, can convert that to a threaded style drain plug, mm -hmm. which you actually use a tool to thread in. Uh, the rubber won't degradate and break down over time and just fall out underwater. So. Uh, first and foremost, if you've got an older boat, we really need to think about uh, making sure if you're going to moor, we get rid of that compression drain plug. Yeah. And on those compression drain plugs, we really do recommend every six months replace that thing. The, what happens is the, the, the rubber gets hard on it, 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 it gets brittle, um, and there's different, there's different materials in there. Some, some of those are brass and some of those are stainless, stainless steel, steel. Some are aluminum. Some are aluminum. And so you put a, you put a brass one in you know, close to an aluminum boat and you you are using it for a while it could just and you're using it in salt water it could just rot out yeah you get back to that dissimilar metal thing you you should really be using an aluminum style compression drain plug if you have one yeah so yeah and with the new threaded ones um, which we've been using now for several years on uh, even trailered boats uh, and moored boats uh, you know those are you have to maintain them a little bit you got to put a little uh, a little corrosion block on the threads which will help you get them in and get them out over time and you want to make sure you you carry the right wrench in your tow vehicle so that you can easily take it out when you're done because you do need to remove those drain plugs it's one of the one of the things that we see a lot where customers have problems because they don't pull their drain plug and they they get a bunch of water in their bilge uh, it just sits there. Well, I store my boat indoor, for example, but my bilge has got 25 or 30 gallons of water in it, and that can cause problems for your electrical system and, and, and just a, a, a very a different things that can be bad. So we want to make sure we're pulling those drain plugs when right. we trailer them. Absolutely. So first and foremost, pull your drain plug before you launch. Make sure, make sure you have a dry bilge, everything looks good, reapply your corrosion block, reapply your sealant, Put the drain plug on with your wrench and make sure that it's got a good seal so you've got a, a really good seal there and you know that, that's first and foremost okay so let's talk about let's talk about ball valves mm -hmm. and um, fish boxes All right so many many of our boats today are built with uh, hole penetrations that are either drains for fish boxes or they are pickups for uh, wash down pumps or or uh, a head system all those kind of things so you've got these, these ball valves that when you walk away from your boat, let's say you put it in and you, at the marina and you went and fished and you came back, tied it up, and you're going to leave for the night, you really need to shut those ball valves. Those should be closed. That way, you know, if something fails, if a hose fails, you've got that ball valve protection. The other thing on fish boxes, you know, a lot of people use those. They let the water flood in, flood out. 
Um, it works really well for keeping them clean, keeping the blood washed out. And, and the attitude of that boat can, you know, help, you know, how it sits at the moor. If it's, if your boat's sitting there with a one degree stern down attitude, all the water's going to run that might get through into your bilge to the back of the boat. And even if you have a self bailing deck, um, you really need to make sure that boat's moored at, you know, one degree stern down if at all possible, because that'll flood all the water that the rain comes down. That'll push it to the back and down to where your bilge pumps are. And you've got the automatic pumps that will kick on and, and keep yep. you from having problems that way. Right. And so make sure that those automatic pumps are, if you have a three-way switch, make sure they're in the auto position. If you um, have, if you haven't upgraded and they're just uh, on an auto float switch, just make sure that, um, that, that they are, that they are working. I mean, you can absolutely, you can, you can reach down there, you can, you can, you can test the float. And make yeah, sure there's ways to test each kind of them that we've used over the years. They all have a test system. Yeah. Um, if you need any uh, questions about those, get with your dealer, uh, call with factory, whatever. We can walk you through how to test your auto system. Yeah, those those bilge pumps are on a, on what's called 24 hour power. So even if you turn your your battery switches off, um, all the, your bilge pumps your bilge pumps and your floats are on a 24 hour power. So they even if with your with your house switch off and your engine switches off, they should still work. So if you do have if you do get water in your bilge, they should function. As long as you have battery, that's that's maintained, and your battery is is up to is up to par. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, in loading your boat, um, we talked a little bit earlier about how the attitude of the boat should sit when it's moored. Um, so when you go away, you know, you, a lot of people with a cabin boat, they might take and push a bus just a weight inside their house or their cabin to store it and lock it up. But when we walk away, we want to know that the water that might be in that boat's running aft. We don't want it running forward, especially on a self bailing deck, which any boat that you're going to moor for an extended period of time really should be a self bailing deck. Yeah. It should not allow bilge water to build in that boat. It should run out through freeing ports or through scuppers. Right. So let's talk about scuppers a little bit. So um, we, we have multiple different, different types of scuppers um, for our self bailing building decks. We have our, our Raybud um, mm -hmm. ping pong balls is what we call them. And we also have um, what we call mechanical scuppers um, um, that are, you know, basically just a, a freeing port, if you will. Right. So the Raybud style that Mike talked about in the beginning or the ping pong ball style work really well. They're a true non-return valve. In other words, when the boat drops below the line of that ping pong ball, the ball comes up and seals a gasket and keeps water from coming back in. The disadvantage of those is over time they can get a little marine buildup on the ping pong ball. Some debris gets in there, some fishing line gets in there. Or herring. Or herring heads or whatever. I've, we've seen it all, trust me. Uh, those, those don't work as a non-return valve. So the mechanical style that Mike talks about is a hinged flap with a rubber seal, but it's not a really a true non-return system. It is a freeing port. So when the water comes up, it could let a little bit of water through, but it won't just gush through. But if you get it down below water line, yes, it's a, not a true non-return. It's an actual freeing port. So when you moor your boat and you're and you know you're you're all tied up at the dock and, and we're we're not really going to get into full you know how to tie your boat up but I mean you should probably have four lines on it so that you have a, a forward aft and a couple of spring lines but um, we'll let you use your your nautical um, research and figure out how to do that properly but when you're looking at that make sure that those those uh, free ports or or you know non-return valves are a minimum of one inch above water line. Um, you right, know. absolutely. If you got, you can usually see them from the from the dock side. You can kind of look under your swim deck and you can see those freeing ports. You can see the non-return valves and make sure they're above the static water line. You know, most marinas, the docks go up and down, the boat goes up and down with the dock, so that water line should stay consistent. So if it's well below water line and you see water coming in on your deck, then we need to do something different with the load we have on the boat at that time. Excellent. There you go. Not that I can remember. All right. Well, that can that concludes our uh, our tips on uh, a safe mooring of your of your vessel. Um, 
if you like what you see, hit like, hit like and subscribe. If you have any other topics or ideas that you that you want, comment in the sections below, and uh, we'll see if we can address those in a future episode. Thank you very much.